Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Boufat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree No. 8 of 2021 amending Article 1 of Decree No. 60 of 2013 on naming the competent ministries and ministers in charge of implementing the provisions of Decree Law No. 21 of 2013 on regulating fundraising for public purposes. According to the decree, the ministry and minister in charge of social development shall have the jurisdiction to implement the provisions of Decree by Law No. 21 of 2013 on regulating fundraising for public purposes. It also stipulates that the Ministry and Minister in Charge of Justice shall be mandated to implement the provisions of Decree Law No. 21 on regulating fundraising for public purposes regarding fundraising by political societies and individuals for religious purposes. The decree also stipulates that the Ministry and Minister in Charge of Youth and Sports Affairs shall be responsible for implementing the provisions of Decree Law No. 21 of 2013 on regulating fundraising for public purposes regarding funds raised by special entities active in the youth and sports sector. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held remotely. The cabinet began by affirming that the recently inaugurated Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Specialist Cardiac Center forms an important addition to the healthcare sector in Bahrain. The cabinet stressed that the development and sustainability of the healthcare sector in a government priority, recalling the role of the late His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa in supporting the development of the center, wishing the center success in providing the highest levels of healthcare services. The cabinet praised the vigilance of the security services, which led to the prevention of terrorist operations aimed at detonating bombs at two ATM machines in the areas of Naim and Jadhafs, stressing that the government will stand against anything that endangers the security and safety of citizens and residents. The cabinet reviewed COVID-19 developments and once again stressed the importance of a renewed commitment to precautionary procedures and preventative measures, as well as encouraging citizens and residents to register for the vaccination. The cabinet underlined the call for Team Bahrain, made up of citizens and residents, to adhere to all instructions issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus in the interest of the health and safety of all. In this regard, the cabinet expressed its appreciation to health workers for their unwavering efforts and safeguards the community in Bahrain. The cabinet praised the efforts of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to bring about a political solution to the Yemen crisis, a reflection of the kingdom's continuous efforts to promote peace in the Middle East through cooperation with its allies. In this regard, the cabinet welcomed the statements made by U.S. President Joe Biden regarding U.S.-Saudi cooperation to address threats to Saudi Arabia's security and stability and the confirmation of U.S. support for diplomatic efforts to resolve the Yemen crisis. The cabinet then discussed a number of memorandums during the meeting and outlined the following outcomes. Firstly, the approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding Bahrain's accession to the Charter establishing the Digital Cooperation Organization, which aims to develop the digital economy and strengthen economic collaboration and investment among member nations. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an amendment of the draft law of the Bahrain Chamber for dispute resolution in order to expand the Chamber's jurisdiction to include disputes between companies licensed by the commercial companies law except in some cases. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the amendment of some provisions of the Judicial Authority Law to improve judicial work and allow courts to deal with cases filed in languages other than Arabic. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding financing the establishment of a new control centre for electricity and water networks. A memorandum from the Minister of Interior regarding hazardous material, their storage and inspection and the findings and recommendations in this regard from the relevant committee. A memorandum from the Minister of Information Affairs regarding the Ministry's subscriptions to regional and international organizations. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs regarding the government's response to eight proposals and one draft law amendment submitted by the Council of Representatives. 
Secondly, the Cabinet reviewed the following topics. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the preliminary statements or estimates of financial results for the year ending 2020, which showed the government's commitment to the public expenditure ceiling approval in the budget despite the impact of COVID-19 and the global drop in oil prices. A joint memorandum from the Minister of Finance and National Economy and the Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning regarding the latest developments in implementing short-term projects aimed at improving the water flow across the Gulf of Tubli, including the development and expansion of the waterway, the expansion of the Maramir Canal and the development of the sea bridge south of the canal. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa held a remote meeting with the newly appointed Ambassador of Korea to Bahrain, Ahai Kwan Chang. During the meeting, His Royal Highness reviewed progress in bilateral ties, emphasizing the mutual benefits to both countries that will result from expanding cooperation across various sectors. His Royal Highness welcomed the new Ambassador and wished him success in his new role. For his part, Ambassador Chang expressed his deep appreciation for His Royal Highness's support towards developing bilateral ties. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa held a remote meeting with the Vice President of the Worldwide Public Sector and Industries at Amazon Web Services AWS, Teresa Carlson. During the meeting, His Royal Highness recognized the impact strategic public-private partnerships have had on advancing innovation capabilities and technological solutions, especially in regard to the increase in efficiency and delivery of government services made possible by harnessing the power of digital technology and cloud computing. His Royal Highness stressed that the Kingdom is committed to developing its ICT sector and fully recognizes the impact digital infrastructure transformation has on economic growth and sustainable development, as well as the long-term impact of nurturing skilled Bahraini contributions to this growing vital sector. For her part, Teresa Carlson expressed appreciation for His Royal Highness's dedication to exploring new avenues for public-private collaboration and digital transformation. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, was also present. A joint parliamentary government meeting was held remotely yesterday under the chairmanship of the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fozi Zainal, with the participation of the chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, and in the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, the Minister of the Shura Representatives Council Affairs, Ghanem bin Fadl Barinin, and the members of the Foreign Affairs, Defence, and National Security Committees of both councils. The meeting was held to brief the legislative authority on the measures taken by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to implement the provisions of Al Ula statement during its uh, signed during the Gulf summit, which was held in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Zainal affirmed that this meeting in, is in line with the continuous cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities, noting the importance of briefing the legislative authority on the stance of the kingdom following the summit and the continued Qatari practices that target the lives and livelihood of Bahraini fishermen. She affirmed the position of the Legislative Authority in support of the directives of His Majesty the King and the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, considering that the rights of Bahraini citizens are a top national priority. She underscored the importance of the role of GCC countries in argue in urging Qatari authorities to respect joint relations and respond formally to the invitation of the Bahraini Ministry of Foreign Affairs to conduct meetings in order to resolve pending issues. For his part, Al Saleh expressed pride in the efforts of the Kingdom in implementing the resolutions of the Gulf Summit, praising its contributions and initiatives under the leadership of His Majesty the King. He also commended the Kingdom's gesture to invite the State of Qatar for direct negotiations to reach an agreement that allows fishermen from both countries to exercise their activities. Al Saleh also valued the keenness of the Foreign Affairs Minister on briefing the Legislative Authority on the latest updates
debates concerning the implementation of Al Ala statement. For his part, the Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed thanks and appreciation for the efforts of the Legislative Authority in enhancing the comprehensive development march led by His Majesty the King with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He hailed the keenness of the Legislative Authority to follow up on the latest developments related to national affairs and the role of the Foreign Affairs Ministry in implementing foreign policy and defending the Kingdom's interests. He affirmed the importance of this meeting to inform the Legislative Authority of the procedures taken by the Ministry with regards to implementing a Ala statement. Dr. Zayani said that Bahrain is keen on implementing the provisions of the statement through a clear and transparent dialogue to achieve the desired goals and resolve all pending issues with Qatar. He affirmed that the kingdom commends the efforts and role of Saudi Arabia and its leadership to unify and enhance joint Gulf action and maintain the security and stability of the member states as well as strengthen Arab security. He stated that the ministry has taken a number of of necessary measures to preserve its interests and protect its security and stability, adding that Bahrain is committed to Al Ala statement and is ready to commence serious bilateral talks with Qatar to address all pending issues. The Deputy President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, headed the Bahraini delegation participating in the 19th General Assembly meeting of the Union of Arab National Olympic Committees on behalf of the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The meeting was chaired by His Royal Highness Prince Talal bin Badr bin Saud bin Abdul Aziz and attended by the Secretary General of the Bahrain Olympic the committee, Mohammed Hassan al Nasif. During the meeting, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali delivered a speech in which he welcomed the attendees and conveyed the greetings of His Highness Sheikh Khalid, praising the efforts made by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in supporting and strengthening the Union. His Highness affirmed that Bahrain will support the activities and programs of the Union in a way that contributes to the advancement of the Olympic movement in the Arab region. The Ministry of Education continues to implement school activities during the exceptional circumstances while taking the necessary precautionary measures in light of its keenness on developing students' talents in various fields to develop Bahraini people's capabilities. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, received at his office the principles of top-winning schools in the environmental research program organized in cooperation between the Ministry and the Gulf Petrochemical Industries company, GPIC. The minister congratulated the winning schools and listened to a briefing on the research and winning projects. He hailed their efforts and the remarkable role of GPIC in implementing this important program that aims to support and encourage secondary school students to innovate in the scientific research field. The Minister of Education stated that the ministry has not ceased to implement similar activities in students' competitions that develop students' creativity despite the pandemic. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, participated in the extraordinary session of the Council of the Arab League at the ministerial level, chaired by the Egyptian Foreign Affairs Minister at the headquarters of the General Secretariat of the Arab League upon a joint request from Egypt and Jordan to discuss regional development. The Egyptian Foreign Affairs Minister, Samah Shikri, delivered a speech in which he stated that the Arab world has faced many challenges in the past decade, adding that the Palestinian cause will remain a priority and that Egypt has not spared any effort to support the peace process. He added that Egypt continued its efforts to end the Palestinian split and to provide support for the Palestinian people to restore cohesion.
The Sunni Endowments Directorate has joined the National Suggestion and Complaint System to Wassel. The Endowments Chairman Dr. Sheikh Rashid Al Hajri commended His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for leading the efforts that have put the kingdom on the same level as the world's most advanced nations. Al Hajri also praised Bahrain's efforts to develop its digital platforms, which now provide the substructure for virtually all transactions and communications between the government and the public. Through Tawassal, the directorate will receive suggestions for improving its services, including the endowment sector and mosque-related issues concerning imams, muaddins, community halls and cemeteries. The Kalali Fishermen Association organized a seminar held remotely on the Qatari systematic targeting of Bahrain's sailors. A number of legislative authority members and representatives of human rights and professional societies expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King's directives to compensate Bahraini sailors affected by violations of the Qatari authorities. The participants stressed the importance of protecting the rights of Bahraini fishermen who have been affected by the violations of the Qatari authorities and suffered heavy losses. They also affirmed their rejection of the Qatari arbitrary measures including the confiscation of their boats and the arrest of workers on board in addition to their imprisonment for long periods without apparent reason. The Ministry of Health urged to assume national responsibility a basic social requirement now to contribute to reducing cases and curb the spread of the virus. The Ministry also highlighted the need to contact 444 hotline in case of any symptoms occur, even if they can be suspected as seasonal flu. For more on this matter, we are joined by the Regional Medical Officer, Consultant, Family Physician, Dr. Reham al -Jarf. Hello, Dr. Reham. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Hi, good evening to all. Hope you're doing well. And hello to our dear listeners. Um, Dr. Raham, considering the weather of changes and how it can cause seasonal flu, what are the necessary precautions to deal with any related symptoms to avoid any chances that lead to an increase in COVID-19 caseload? Right. First of all, I'd like to thank you for having me today. And I'd like to begin also by offering my sincere thanks to His Royal Highness, the King Hamad bin um, Isa Al Khalifa, and the Prime Minister as well, uh, the Crown Prince and Mohammed bin Isa, for their continued support to all the Bahraini citizens and ensuring that our community all have access to the vaccine, as you all know by now, and offering complete medical support for any contact or even positive cases. So let's speak about a little about the seasonal variations. With the seasonal variation, there is a fact that respiratory viruses will increase. This might be due to the temperature changes or even due to humidity. And though there is no solid evidence that there is a direct connection between the climate change and COVID transmission, we have to be aware that increase, uh, the increase of these respiratory viruses make people prone to catch viruses. So they have to be careful about it because this will drop, uh, cause a drop in their immunity, making them any time eligible to have a transmission of the COVID virus. Thank you very much, Dr. Raham, for being with us today. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that the total number of individuals who have taken the vaccine has reached 191,406. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 5,779 with 396 recoveries, 616 registered new cases and two deaths. 230 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 363 are contacts of active cases and 23 are travel related. The deceased were a 70-year-old male expatriate and a 70-year-old male citizen. The Ministry expressed its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges every Everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.